Hello, how you doing? In this video, I'm going to talk about vectors and how they're used by LLMs. You have likely heard of vectors as they are a commonly used mathematical object that show up in a large number of engineering and computer science fields. But do you know exactly how they're used in LLMs? Well, if not, watch along with me for the next few minutes and I will quickly get you up to speed. Okay, let's get started. First, let's start with what exactly is a vector. A vector is a mathematical object that has both magnitude and direction. A vector is typically represented as an ordered list of numbers, which are called components or coordinates. Here's a simple example of a vector in two-dimensional space. In addition to two dimensions, there are also three-dimensional vectors. Here's an example vector in three-dimensional space. There is an X, Y, and Z component for this 3D vector. Here I show the vector notation for two, three, four, and n dimensions. For humans, it's pretty easy to visualize two and three dimensions, but to visualize n dimensions is pretty hard. It's important to call out that LLMs and ML models in general commonly process data that is represented in n dimensional space where n is a very large number going into the thousands. Common operations on all vectors include addition, subtraction, scalar multiplication, dot products, and cross products. Quick note, you will notice I skipped over one-dimensional vectors. The reason is a one-dimensional vector is really just a simple number or scalar value, so they're typically not used by LLMs. There are three common ways LLMs use vectors that I want to cover in this video. They are LLM embeddings, LLM model input output operations, and similarity searches. So let's first talk about the first one. What is an LLM embedding? LLMs can take in raw text and generate an embedding. In this example, we show an LLM generating an embedding for a text document. Quick note, although in this example, we are showing an embedding being created for a text document, you can also create embeddings for sentences or even words. So how does this work? Well, step one is the tokenization process. In this process, the LLM tokenizer converts the raw text into tokens. In step two, in the embedding process, each token is mapped to an n-dimensional vector through an embedding layer in the LLM. The result of step two is a generation of an embedding which in this example of a text document is a sequence of vectors. Each vector corresponds to a token and captures its meaning in n-dimensional space. These vectors enable the model to perform mathematical operations and understand relationships between tokens. I plan to go into more detail on LLM embeddings in an upcoming video, but this should give you a quick high-level conceptual overview of how this works. So now moving to the next way LLMs use vectors, what do we mean by LLM input output operations? Well, this is one example you're probably already familiar with. If you have used a chat client to interact with an LLM, such as chat GPT, for example, the chat interactions with the LLM are exactly what we mean by LLM model input output operations. When the LLM receives the prompt from the user, the LLM tokenizer converts the text in the user prompt into tokens. The LLM embedding layer takes the input tokens and uses them to construct an embedding, which again is just a sequence of vectors. The LLM then processes the input embedding and generates a response in the form of an output embedding, which is converted back into output tokens. The LLM tokenizer then converts the output tokens into text that the user can understand. So now, moving to the last example of how LLMs use vectors, I'm going to get into how LLMs perform similarity searches. Similarity searches also rely on embeddings. Again, an embedding is simply a vector representation of text. In this example, to make it easier to visualize, I'm showing a 3D vector which represents some input text. I do want to call out in, in real-world scenarios this is likely an n-dimensional vector. 
but let's keep it in 3D to make it easier to visualize. Imagine our input text is derived from a prompt sent to an LLM. In building a response to the prompt, the LLM will want to compare the input text to a large store of text documents to find the most semantically relevant matches. How will the LLM do this? Well, the first step is the LLM will create an embedding from the text in the input prompt. Again, this embedding is a vector. Now, the LLM can compare the embedding from the input prompt with all the embeddings for all the text documents in the store, enable it to return embeddings which are the most similar. So mathematically, how does the LLM do this? It turns out there are a number of different similarity algorithms the LLM can use, but in this example, I will show one which is called cosine similarity. You can see the vector for the input prompt, and you can see one of the vectors from one of the documents in the store. Cosine similarity measures the angle between the two vectors. The equation is shown as cosine theta is equal to the dot product of the vectors divided by the product of both vectors' magnitudes. This value of theta becomes a measure of similarity between blocks of text. Using this approach, the LM can find the most relevant blocks of text, which it then uses to generate a response back to the user. I plan to go into more detail on similarity search in an upcoming video, but this should give you a quick, high-level, conceptual overview of how this works. In summary, you should have an understanding of how vectors are foundational to the operation of LLMs, enabling them to represent, process, and understand text in a mathematical, tractable way. Vectors underpin the LLM's ability to generate and interpret language. Okay, thanks for watching. This video, along with all my other videos in the ML AI Knowledge Concepts playlist, are listed in the YouTube description. I invite you to watch other videos on my channel. If you like the way I'm sharing this content, please consider subscribing. When you subscribe, this really helps my channel grow. One last thing. We all love technology and we're all excited about innovation with the cloud and machine learning AI, but don't forget to carve out some time to live in the real world. Go outside, go swimming, go hiking, go climbing, go surfing, get out and move your body. And if you do, tell me in the comments, I wanna hear about it. And with that, have a great day. Thank you.